Hi, my name is Kyle Royer. I live here in Mountain View, Missouri, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to make my Master Smith performance knife. To do this, I'm going to start with 1080 and 15 and 20, 20 layers of each, and I'm going to alternate it 1080, 15 and 20, 1080, 15 and 20, so on until I have the whole billet stacked up. But first, I need to grind all the scale off of the 1080 because it'll inhibit the two materials from sticking together. If there's scale in there, some could get trapped, and that would mean I would have a scale inclusion or some kind of a little pit or something that might uh, pop out of the knife when I go to do the bend part of the test. Okay, well I guess I'll get started now and start grinding. All right, now I'm gonna grind the mill scale off of the 1080. We'll do that, flip it over, and complete the process until all 20 pieces are done. Okay, here you can see the 1080 before the mill scale was ground off and after the mill scale has been ground off. Um, you want to grind this off because sometimes if you don't, it might all come off when you forge weld or there's a chance that some of it could stay in there and I can't take any risk of any of that staying in there, so that's why I clean it all off completely before I start. All right, now I've got all the 1080 cleaned off, so I will start stacking the 1080 and 15 and 20. 1080, 15 and 20. 1080, 15 and 20. 1080, 15 and 20. It goes like that until I have them all stacked up into a big uh, billet. Here's my billet all stacked up and now I'm going to put it in here get it all leveled out and clamp together when everything really nice and even So all the layers sit well with each other. I'm going to transfer it from that vise over here so I can weld the end. Tack weld it to hold everything together real nice and tight while it's heating up in the forge. Alright, now I'm going to tack weld the ends of the billet and the sides. And also I'll put a handle on it and it'll be ready for the forge. Flip this around, weld the other end up. Now the sides. And the handle. Ready for the forge. Now I'm going to put some kerosene on the billet and that will make it so the flux sticks to it before it gets hot. Uh, I used to put the flux on after the billet heated up because that way, that way it would stick then but if you go too far it can start forming scale in there. This way 
billet never has a chance to form scale on the inside. And that will go directly into the forge. Here's a shot of the inside of the forge where you can see the billet heating up. I want it to reach about 2300 degrees before I take it out. And uh, once the billet's out, I'll start forging it down using the hydraulic press. My billet's hot, it's time to forge. I'm going to want this bar to end up being about uh, half inch thick and about an inch and a half wide or so before I start cutting it up and restacking. in the forge for more heat. All right, ready for some more. On the next heat, I'll put a spacer in there to make sure I don't forge it down past half inch thick. Trying to keep the billet nice and square as it goes. Sometimes if you get going wrong, it'll pull it into a diamond shape. It started doing that on the other heat, but it's going good now. All right, I think two more heats will do it. Got my half inch spacer in there. The bullet's so long it won't all fit in the forge now, so I have to do it do half at a time or so. And put that on there to make it one and a half inches. Grind the scale off and cut it up before I restack. 